Hey everyone, this is the next um, day of extension algebra lessons, um, day three on functions. So all around you, things occur in patterns. Once you observe a pattern, you can predict information beyond and between the data observed. The ability to use patterns to make predictions makes it possible for you to run to the right situation, to catch a fly ball, or guess how a story will end. So this situation here is going to be the entire notes for today, right? Leaky Larry did an experiment to determine the rate at which a leaky fa leaking faucet loses water. He recorded the data he observed in the table below. Time in seconds, um, so this is the time in seconds, and the water volume in milliliters, okay? This is milliliters, um, four, eight, et cetera. What variable did Larry investigate in his experiment? So the variables he represented are time in seconds and water volume. Whoops. Water volume in milliliters. Okay. Which variable represents the independent and which variable represents the depending quantity? So how about you think about that? We've talked about it. And in this situation, the time is going to be your independent variable, okay? And the volume, water volume, is going to be your dependent, dependent, having issues spelling right now. Variable. And the reason for that is you're controlling time. Okay. The water volume is going to be based. It's the the result of the volume of water is going to be completely based on the amount of time that passes by, which is why this is what it is. Okay. Number two, make a coordinate graph of the data leaky Larry corrected. Be sure to label the x act the, the axis. Is. So remember the x axis is always going to be your independent variable, and the y is going to be your dependent variable. Um, you almost generally for now want to have zero be the beginning of your, like, X and your Y. Uh, it makes graphs a little bit neater. You're going to see graphs way, way maybe in the future when you have bigger numbers, um, maybe that don't start off at zero, but you really want to start off at zero. Um, and let's just see how it is. This is all increasing by five. So you want to do zero, five, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just see if it's the right amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it is. So we're gonna do we're gonna do increments of five over here. And you don't always have to write every single number. In this, I'm just gonna do the tens. Ten. Just to make it a little neater and it's not so many numbers. I can count by like fives. And this is time in seconds. And for the Y, it's going to be water volume in milliliters, but it's going in fours. So make sure that this is zero, four. I'm going to go again, do an eight, 16, and maybe all of these I'll write. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 30, 32. What am I doing? So what happens? I'm just like randomly doing things, and I started counting by twos. 32, 36, 40. All right, and I can't write sideways on my computer right now, so I'm just going to write it like horizontal. Normally, you would rotate it in the way you write it. And this is water volume in milliliters, okay? And now you're just going to plot these points. So it's going to be 5, 4, 5, 4. I'm going to make this thicker. Five, four, ten, eight, fifteen, twelve, twenty, sixteen, twenty five, twenty, thirty, twenty 
then your graph should look something like this. All right. Describe the relationship between the two variables. Is it a positive correlation? Is it a negative correlation? Or is it no correlation? And again, when you're trying to figure out correlations, you're looking at the graph left to right. And in this, it's increasing. So it is a positive correlation. Jeez. Correlation? Yeah, correlation. So let's do number four. If a faucet dripped at the same rate as Larry's did, how much water would be wasted in two minutes? And one thing you want to know is so let's just talk about trying to create an equation. I think this is a really good thing right now. And your lesson in class was talking about rate of change. Well, the x's are increasing by five every single time. Okay, and the y's are increasing by 4 every single time. An equation really does help in the situation. I know you can predict without it, but honestly, like, there's a reason for having an equation. Um, and now your, your b, okay, where when you're looking at the graph over here, you're going to realize that your b, you want to, b is where, it is a y-intercept, meaning where is, the, where is this line going to cross the y-axis? And... That just means at zero time, there is no water, okay? So your B is going to be zero, and your rate of, your M is your rate of change, which is change in Y over change in X. And change in Y is down here, which is four, and change in X is five. So your equation for this is going to be y is equal to 0 plus 4 fifth x. So y is equal to 4 fifth x. This is really important to get these answers down here. So where you, we're going to be using y equals 4 fifth x. And we can change it to the units that they have, but we can make that assumption that your input is your x which is time, and you're going to be basing, this is going to be your time. X is your time. So two minutes. You can't just put two minutes over here. How are we measuring our time? It's in seconds. It's in seconds, so you have to convert two minutes into seconds, and we know that one minute has 60 seconds. So that means two minutes is going to have 120 seconds. So now you're just going to... Use your equation y equals 4 fifth x and just replace x with 120. So that's going to give you y equals 4 over 5 times 120. Um, I mean, I'm just going to take this shortcut here and use a calculator. <laughs> so 4 times 120 divided by 5, 96. So this is going to give you, my pen, 96 milliliters. All right, how about you, I'm going to um, pause the video here, and how about you do the rest of this, okay? All right, welcome back. Check to see if your answers are right. Um, and we made our prediction using creating the equation that from up there. Um, number five. If a faucet dripped into one liter measuring container at the same rate as Larry's experiment, how long would it take for the container to overflow? So in this situation, we know our equation is y equals 4 fifth x. And this time we know the y is going to be one liter, and one liter is how many milliliters? Well, there are 1,000 milliliter in one liter. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to do the, the work in blue, is going to be 1,000 for your y equals 4 fifth x. 
And those of you that did the other lessons, remember to solve for x, we have to multiply by the reciprocal because we're dividing four fifths of both sides. Okay, and we're going to be left with x equals 5,000 divided by 4. Gives you 1,250 seconds. It doesn't say using what unit. Um, this I'm running out of time, so I'm going to end video one over here. We're going to finish the rest of this in the second version of this video, all right?